Good evening. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to Grace Lutheran. Uh, it is nice to see all of you here with us this evening. Of course, Saturday evening is also when we live stream and record. So uh, welcome to all of you who might be out there. I'm Pastor Lockren. If we've never met before, uh, hopefully we will someday. That would be very nice. And if you're watching with us, or even those of you who are here, you could go home later on, uh, just pop on the YouTube station, like the video, share the video on your Facebook page as well. That helps uh, to drive up the number of people who get the opportunity uh, to hear the saving gospel of Jesus Christ, which is a good thing. All right, I do have a few announcements to make before we get rolling. Um, the first is, you know very well, we've been running very short-handed over the last four or five months, and we appreciate your patience with that. Uh, we're getting there, but this week will be the short handiest, if that's a word, uh, of the week, of the weeks that we've had. Deaconess Marissa is in Fort Wayne uh, doing her intensive, her theological interview. Uh, she'll also have her placement service, which will be on Thursday morning. Uh, so if you wanted to watch that, you could log into the Concordia Theological Seminary Fort Wayne uh, website, and you could watch her be placed uh, back here at Grace as our regular deaconess. So we're excited about that. A uh, reminder, too, that Deaconess May Itzkovich will be uh, here beginning on June the 1st. So she'll be our deaconess intern. She'll be the one who will be our parish administrator going forward for uh, the next year at least. Uh, as we do often with new church workers, we're working right now on having some sort of reception for her. Uh, we'll, she'll be installed on the 4th of June, which is Saturday evening, but then on the 5th of June, which is Sunday, and it would be after church on Sunday. Uh, we're thinking we'd have a gift card shower for her, which is what we did for uh, the, the Cronkies last year when Deaconess Marissa arrived. So you do keep that in mind, maybe mark that date. It'd be nice to welcome Deaconess May. Our annual gala is being held this week. It is going to be virtual. Uh, it will be Friday night. Uh, that starts at 7 o'clock. There's all kinds of uh, flyers and such out in the Welcome Center. Uh, so you can grab one and get information about that. Uh, if you wanted to take a look at some of the things that we'll have to offer, there will be a live sneak preview on Wednesday evening from 5 to 7. So we'll have a food truck here. You can grab a bite to eat, uh, take a look at some of the stuff. I just saw it this evening. Uh, there's some really uh, nice opportunities there. Proceeds from that gala uh, go towards items that allow us to fulfill our purpose of being a Christ-centered school that offers an exceptional education. All right, last thing. We have our spring voters meeting coming up that's a week from monday night at seven o'clock board for finance will be bringing forward our annual work program our budget at that meeting uh, already all of that information is in the welcome center for you you'll notice it uh, it's on a table there right beside a little thing that i wrote out that says voters meeting and i think as messy as my handwriting is you can read at least see the v part of it you know, that's voters meeting. I know that is a lot. Uh, all of it is on our website. We'd love to have you check the website out. Uh, it's all there for you in living color. Now let's prepare our hearts for worship. We'll go ahead and sing a hymn.
Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Please praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him to the heights. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all deep. O oh Lord, Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. day of Easter is from Acts, the 11th chapter. Now, the apostles and the brothers who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him, saying, you went to uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter began and explained it to them in order. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, something like a great sheet descending, being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to me. Looking at it closely, I observed animals and beasts of prey and reptiles and birds of the air, and I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, eat and kill. But I said, By no means, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the voice entered a second time, answered a second time from heaven. What God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times, and all was drawn up again into heaven. And behold, at that very moment, three men arrived at the house in which we were sent to be from Caesarea. The Spirit told me to go with them, making no distinction. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told us how he had seen the angel stand in his house and say, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your household. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as on us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? When they heard these things, they fell silent, and they glorified God, saying, Then to the Gentiles also, God has granted repentance that leads to life. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from the Revelation of St. John, the 21st chapter. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. But he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. 
Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. A little while and you will see me no longer. And again a little while and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, What is this that he says to us? A little while and you will not see me. And again a little while and you will see me. And because I am going to the Father. So they were saying, What does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he's talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, Is this what you are asking yourselves? What I meant by saying, a little while, and you will not see me? And again, a little while, and you will see me? Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now. But I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice. And no one will take your joy from you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. It was the fall of my fourth year at seminary that I first heard it, or, or more accurately, read it there in the margin of my paper for my class, Lutheran Church in America. I can't exactly recall why, but I had written that while good tools, computers had ushered in the greatest period of liturgical change in the church's history. I should have used the word perhaps. Perhaps it was the 
greatest period of liturgical change. Because as my professor was quick to point out, one must be very careful of absolutes. Unless they're God's absolutes. Now, some of God's absolutes, most of God's absolutes, are very obvious. Take the Ten Commandments as an example. They are such that I do not need a Supreme Court justice, congressman, or president to tell me that murder is a sin. It is. The only lawful taking of a human life allowed in the Bible would be a soldier or police officer in the line of duty. You remember this from confirmation days. Or the executioner carrying out a sentence. I'm not keen on any of those, by the way, for the record. I'm not keen on the taking of human life at all. But the Bible is clear on what's permitted and what's not. And that's an issue too, isn't it? More and more, it seems as if it's become socially acceptable to ignore laws that one doesn't like. I don't need a show of hands on this one. Perhaps there's no one here who's even ever thought this way, but I've certainly had people come up to me and say it. What's wrong? If I smoke a little dope now and again. Come on, pastor. It's going to be legal soon anyway. Get with the times. Or, or how about this one? I think looking around at the audience, this one hits much closer to home. Who here kept the traffic laws perfectly? On your way to church this evening. Worse though. What we do in the civil realm. Often makes its way into our hearts. It becomes less of an accident. And more of a way of life. And sometimes further than that. Into the official teachings of the church. Further still. Church bodies and popular movements that play footloose and fancy free with God's absolutes, seemingly are the more popular one, thereby creating a pressure point for those who are struggling to be faithful. And that's when Satan steps in, and he accuses. He says, you aren't popular. You must be doing something wrong. You need to get with the times. Why not? Everyone else is doing it. And so as a corrective to his temptation, and also as a means of understanding how God's absolutes are properly applied, I'd like us to consider that reading from Acts that you just heard. In so doing, please remember that Acts is one of the most See what I did there? One of the most where the rubber hits the road books in the Bible. Think about it with me. While my Semprof's preference was the Reformation era as the time of greatest liturgical change in church history, the reality is that it's not even close. The right answer is the transition from the Old Covenant the New Testament, that time period recorded for us in the book of Acts, it's easily the greatest change and most difficult time for God's people. Consider it again. We've said it numerous times in Bible studies that the first converts to Christianity were Old Covenant Jewish folks. Well, we don't often talk about it. That's exactly who Peter, John, James, and the other apostles were. Of course, there were questions among that group as to what being a Christian meant. There weren't any Christian role models other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. 
how many of the old covenant practices were going to be retained? Circumcision, ceremonial laws, including the keeping of the festivals, cleanliness codes, dietary restrictions, the Ten Commandments themselves. While the list is not endless, it's pretty long, as long as the first five books of the Bible, in fact. Further, that list, as it were, was descriptive of the lives of many of those people. It's how they lived. Regardless of what might be left out or added in, this change was going to be excruciatingly difficult. Let's read about it for a bit in Acts chapter 11. Here's how it started out. Now the apostles and brothers who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him, saying, you went to uncircumcised men and ate with them. And there it is, isn't it, exactly the type of tension I'm talking about. You, you might even recall it from reading your Bible, how in Acts chapter 10, Peter was given that vision that he described straight from God, about a man, a Gentile, named Cornelius, a Roman soldier of some rank. Cornelius feared God, as in, you should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. He feared him like that, as did his whole household. So in his vision, Peter was commanded to kill and eat unclean foods to which he said but lord we've never done it that way before sound familiar and this despite the fact that peter had been a witness to the lord jesus christ despite the fact that he had heard jesus say that the proper understanding of the old testament bible was that it pointed the way to him and then also to people's need for a savior. Under that old covenant, God set apart for himself a people in order to keep the Messiah's bloodline pure so that the world might know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it was he, God the Son, Jesus, and no one else once his work was completed. As proof, notice that there are no other messianic pretenders kicking around. We even come close to having said or done the things that Jesus said and did, all according to the Old Testament scriptures. So then, once he breathed his last, the old covenant was scrapped. Now, certainly there are things to be found there that still serve a very good purposes. The book of Hebrews tells us that the example of God's people of old, both negative and positive, are there for us. Likewise, the Ten Commandments, like them or not, stand as written and more so as Jesus himself described them because they are a perfect description of how the Lord God Almighty wants his people to live. By keeping those commandments, we provide a similar witness for the world to the one that Israel provided in days gone by. As a brief aside, you may be wondering at this point, as your pastor, I'm praying that you're wondering at this point why it was Peter and not Paul who found himself at odds with the circumcision party there in Jerusalem. After all, Paul was the missionary to the Gentiles, wasn't he? You'd expect it to be him. Well, yes, you would. But even though he had been called, 
he had not yet been commissioned for it. Much like our deaconess intern will be placed back here this upcoming week. Most church workers will tell you, I would tell you if you were to have a conversation with me, that they experience an inner call to service, one that's often affirmed or sometimes even initiated by other people. Next, after a period of training, a formal call is issued, and then it's ratified, either through an ordination for pastors or commissioning for deaconesses, teachers, other church workers. Formally, Marissa will become our deaconess when she's commissioned in August. Of course, she's already the deaconess in our hearts. I, I suspect it's going to be the same way with May, too. Our incoming deaconess intern. You're going to enjoy meeting and getting to know her. At any rate, we get Peter rather than Paul here, as the battle for Gentile admission into the church ensues. No, they don't have to be circumcised, nor do they need to keep the old covenant ceremonial laws, saith the Lord, a truth that would be ratified out of all things a church council meeting a few years later. Interestingly enough, the one at which Paul was commissioned. What is more, God's choice of Peter for this role was as brilliant as his choice of Paul to go around the world building on what happened in Acts chapter 11, especially the Spirit's work there. Listen to it again as we wrap things up. Peter continued. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, the Gentiles, as on us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to stand in God's way? When they heard these things, they fell silent. And they glorified God, saying, then to the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life. Now, as is so often the case, this sounds as if it is a they all lived happily ever after moment. We get lots of those in the Bible, don't we? But it never seems to work out that way. A few years later, there would be a dispute between Paul and Peter over the very same things. It seems that for a while, Peter played both sides against one another, having one foot in the world of no more needing to keep the law, another foot in league with the circumcision party. In the end, it is always that way, this side of heaven. The tensions that exist for believers in a fallen and broken world. We are. You are. I am. Same time sinner. Same time saint. Which, by the way, is proof of another one of God's absolutes. No one may be saved by keeping the law. Therefore, you are saved by God's grace through faith, and this not of your own doing. It's the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. And that, dear friends, in Christ Jesus, is the Holy Triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, whose nature is love. That is another of his absolutes, perhaps his ultimate one. His nature is love. He loves to give of himself to the point that he created the heavens and the earth along with we people herein to share it all with. He loves to give of himself. 
to the point that when we let him down by sinning, he gave his own son over to death, even death on the cross, to pay for that sin and remove its curse for all who believe. The Holy Triune God sends the Spirit into the lives of people, your life, by the means that he is appointed. Gospel preaching, holy baptism, and the Lord's Supper, by which he creates saving faith. By these means, you absolutely have a place in God, the Son, Jesus' own death and resurrection. Or to put it another way, the way our reading for today does, by these means you have the gift of a life of repentance and faith. The very life that God requires of his New Testament people. The very life you live this side of heaven until Jesus returns. Another one of God's absolutes. So you can take that one to the bank. He is risen. Amen. Please stand with me in joining in praising God by stating those absolutes in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe. Be seated for the prayer of the church. In our prayers this evening, we remember all of those who are listed on our prayer page. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you have fashioned the church as a heavenly bride for your risen Son. Grant her your spirit that she may always listen to his deathless voice and ever declare his message of salvation. Continue to pour out your blessings on us at Grace through the preaching of your word as we look to enroll ever more scholars in our day school and to enroll more people and families in the catechesis process towards membership here. Be also with Deaconess Marissa and her family as she awaits formal pla placement and be also with Deaconess May as they work towards the end of this semester of studies. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, lead your people in your steadfast love and guide them in strength to your holy abode. Sanctify our homes, be the companion of those who live alone, and make all our households places in which your wisdom and grace are found Lord, in your mercy, eternal Lord, you hold all people accountable for the responsibilities you have given them. O Lord, bless our president, our governor, the Congress and legislature, and all judges and magistrates. Guide them to serve according to your will and for the common good of all. 
Raise up those with heroic virtue who will defend our liberty. Protect those who defend us in the armed forces, especially those who are listed on our prayer page, even as you give peace to the nations. Lord, in your mercy. O Alpha and Omega, you pledge to bring all things to their perfect consummation. You will bring heaven to earth and banish sorrow, sin, and death. Sustain Kathy, Tev, Joan, Gloria, Jennifer, Cynthia, Christy, Clint, Jan, Feather, Phil, Megan, Kathy, Nita, Ginger, Stan, Gary, Jane, Mike, Tom, Clarence, Paul, George, Joyce, Jan, Walt, the Green family, those now in tribulation. Be the comfort, by the comfort of your holy word, increase their faith and see them through their trials, Lord, in your mercy. Compassionate Lord, you have given us both bread for the body of Christ and Christ the bread of life. Prepare us now to receive with faith and thanksgiving his flesh for the life of the world and his blood that cleanses us from all sin. Unite us so that we may believe and confess one faith and bring us to that day when we shall be one people together at the table of our Lord, Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And of course, our offering plates are up in the front so that when you come up for Holy Communion, uh, you're welcome to bring your, your offering up with you there. If you're watching us and you wish to support us online, uh, there's information on that slide as to where you would go. There's a drop down on our website. Please stand to sing the doxology. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, and most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us, and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said take eat 
This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We greet one another with the Lord's peace.
The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shall strengthen and keep you steadfast in the true faith and life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come and the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, but on the day of his coming, we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you in favor and give you peace. Amen. 
Go and gracefully serve the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. 